Will a peace pact really guarantee a peaceful election in a dual state? And the United States announces visa restrictions for those involved in rigging Kogi and Bayelsa governorship election. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladende. Welcome to Plots Politics. The United States has announced visa restrictions on individuals who were involved in the rigging of the Kogi and Bayelsa governorship elections in Nigeria, which took place in 2019. While announcing these, Mark Pompeo, the Secretary of State, said individuals have operated with impunity at the expense of the Nigerian people and have undermined democratic principles in Nigeria. Both state elections are taking place in 2019 with observers, journalists, and civil society organizations declaring them to be full of violence, voter intimidation by security forces, and vote buying. Joining us to discuss this is Matthias Emeribe, who is a legal practitioner, a political analyst, and you may also describe him as a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Mr. Matthias. Good evening. Yeah, good to have you. And also joining us in you. this conversation is uh, Wale Ogunade, who is uh, the executive or the president of Voter Awareness Initiative. Good evening, Mr. Wale. Okay, uh, we will be joined by Wale Ogunade any moment from now. Let me start with Matthias uh, Meribe. Um, oftentimes, we monitor elections as journalists, as observers. We get really, really worried that uh, it appears nothing gets done. This political class, they, they get away with a lot of things. But it appears that uh, soccer seems to be coming from an international community. Do you think this will in any way you know, serve as deterrent to the political class? Well, um, I think uh, the issue of visa ban which the United States came up with, for me, is only an indication of the fact that they are aware of how we go about our election here in Nigeria. I do not think, we do respect, if the 2019 election is anything to go by, that it has the effect of actually, you know, curtailing the excesses of the political class. I say this because the 2019 general election, for instance, if or not, in, we are witnesses to some very naked show of force that were demonstrated, not only by security forces, you know, using River State as an example, but by equally some people, what you may call political talks, who became emboldened by, when, by, the, by the security agencies that looked the other way and they went about doing what they are doing. And I had thought that by the visa ban that the United States came up with sometime in July of that same year, 2019, it would be enough to send the signal against the same kind of rigging mechanism that had been employed by some people in the corridors, as it were. And uh, unfortunately, in Bayesa and Kogi, we saw the worst kind of uh, rigging, an open one for that matter. So it is my humble opinion and my view that if the visa ban policy has any positive effect, it is only to the extent that it puts other international bodies on notice about the nature of our election, that we have not been doing it or getting it, getting it right in line with democratic teenage. But as to whether the actors themselves within Nigeria have anything you know, to, to learn or to act as a deterrent, I, I doubt it as much. And that is why it appears they have been emboldened. Because for instance, if the Kogi election is anything to go by, 
Of course, the matter was ventilated in the court. And unfortunately, the court did not see anything wrong with what happened in, do, in the election and appears to have endorsed you know, what, what transpired in those elections, which was even, even, even before the eyes of the entire world. So what I might take is that, what I'm thinking is that the, the, the U.S. has indirectly come to say, look, if people are not seeing this, we are seeing them, so to speak. So, but as to the effectiveness of the visa ban, I doubt whether it is actually achieving the purpose okay. for which uh, you know Matthias, it is met. Let, let's let's yes. look at it from this angle. As much as I agree with you, I mean, as much as uh, your opening statement is noted, but let's look at it uh, the, the the import of this decision. Sometimes some have even said that maybe the U.S. should even extend it to their family members. Some of these political class, their children are schooling there. Some of those political class, you recall what happened to Abubakar Atiku in the last election, how traveling to US was a big deal for him. And uh, maybe US is only saying that we do not have sovereignty over your country, but we are saying that you'll be denied some things. Yes, uh, let me tell you, while uh, I agree that uh, people are clamoring or asking that, okay, extend it to this, and this is what will happen. But I, I, my take is that I think ultimately we should be the one that should be concerned about also getting it right here in, in Nigeria. Uh, because if Nigeria gets it right, by extension, Africa may, have, may, may get it right. And, and I think because if, if they know the import of what this kind of Thing that we are doing, talking about the nature of a rigging, I mean, election we are conducting, particularly in respect of the rigging machinery that we adopt in an election. Mm -hmm. I, I think they themselves, uh, talking about the political actors, they will, they, they, they will automatically, you know, have to warn themselves before they go into it. But it doesn't appear that the thing has the, the fundamental effect, because the truth about it is that election riggers, no doubt, are like coup plotters that carried out a coup against uh, perhaps uh, another government that came in via that bank. And we know too well that the, the consequences for coup plotting, except under a batch where some of them were commuted to maybe life imprisonment, have been dead all the while. At least we saw it under Babangida when the Vasa coup was alleged to have taken place. That's so, true. And we know the danger in things like that. So it's the same thing as coup plotters. But unfortunately... Some of our political actors, even the officials, appears to have given appear to have given given it uh, what we call an official cover to say this thing can go on and nothing will happen. Especially when you look at the utterances that come from them, I, I mean, as statesmen and people who are in the corridors of power, you must watch what you say and how you say them. You don't just come out and start talking, notwithstanding what you may have said in your closet. But the fact that you are one of those that, by implication, people look up to, as an example. These are things that should warn you, that should make you understand that, look, you don't just come out and talk anyhow. But then when it is in respect of uh, uh, maybe a television station that has a wider view or coverage than the case may be. So coming to think of it, when we talk about whether extending it to their family and so on, it only depends on who you are talking to. Because it appears that there is a rich culture of loyalty to the court-like character, which is exemplified in the party itself over and above the nation. Because if you have the national, if you have national interest as your number one priority, it has the effect of checkmating what you, I mean, checkmating you, so to say, in the way you approach election and how you go about it. And by so doing, you as an official body, when you lead by example, the other people will equally take, uh, you know, uh, how do you call it, uh, take that example and also set the drawback to say, no, I'm not going to join in all this. But when you are not coming up openly to not demonstrate that by virtue of state power, I can do anything and I get away with it. Take, for instance, those who lead the election in 2019, how many of them have been tried? How many of them have been found wanting? Except for very few, so to say. And there are so many things that happen, particularly, let's take Lagos, for instance. We saw before our very eyes what happened somewhere in Nokota. In that area so far, as it stands, 
What has happened in respect of those attitudes or that action that was displayed? Even a policeman who was unarmed was made to be helpless because he cannot stop those who came in armed and wanting to, you know, and, and carried out those uh, uh, actions with impunity. So some of these things are how the officials have acted. If they act in a manner which, of course, does not give hope, what you will find those people doing is to say it's like this, the order of the day, and that's the only way. Because as we stand, whether we like it or not, people who are lording it over us, some of them are people who came courtesy of that rigging machinery, meaning that they are not the choice of the people. And today, they are the ones that are taking decisions. Okay. That is why when Mateus. we say that we, won't want, we don't want foreign enemies, it's let's, not their business. Let's, let's try and explore this more, uh, uh, because uh, it's, it's sad. It's a sad commentary that both of us uh, will have to look at what the U.S. is doing to ensure that we have... Um, a free and fair election when we are a sovereign nation, we have an electoral commission, and we are looking at uh, United States, who probably has its own issues to also resolve. But staying on these, we're looking at the import, because sometimes when we have international observers in our elections, we'll be like, what is the essence? Why are they here? And they seem to have a clear purpose on why they attend our election, they witness our election, they observe our election. Now, they've come out with a subtle way of saying, we are not disclosing these names. Could it be another setback that they have done? Probably, if these names are disclosed, there'll be a kind of name and shame. Um, you know, let me, let me say something. You know, the Americans or other nationals, or na uh, nations, so to speak, they are equally very careful in not uh, going to the extent of uh, disclosing names. Because we all know the import of where you come up with such and what will happen. Because most of these people that uh, they are alleging to be riggers, they are equally heavyweights that probably have very deep pockets and who may probably fight their way whichever way you want it, whether legally or otherwise. They have the capacity of invoking to say you are disparaging their, their name and their personality. So, and if within the Nigerian square, you've not been able to get enough uh, evidence to nail them, as it were. I mean, I, I wonder whether it is the international community that come out. When they get all those evidence, where would they take it to? And mind you, it's like, uh, more like intruding into the internal affairs of the nation. Because you, yes, you can find or you can see them as people who, of course, uh, you know, are danger as far as the electoral process uh, is what concerned. But I think uh, it, it's, it's at best you leave it at saying, okay, you are going to deny them and you have their names in all the embassy, as it were. When they come, you deny them, show them this is the reason why I'm denying you. But to not come up public and put the name, you know, as it were, that this will, we are going to deny you visa on the strength of this. The question is that who has found them guilty? of election rigging in Nigeria. If you want to now go to court, which court are you going to go to? Are you going to take them to American court or are you bringing them to Nigerian court where, of course, none of the evidence so far has pointed to them as being those who rigged? Okay. Because those who will assist you in picking the evidence to make it happen is the same state. The officials of the state, if they are going to prosecute, who will prosecute? The officials of the state. When they are not desirous of prosecuting, what are you going to do in this circumstance? So we have to be very careful so that we don't end up, I mean, okay. they, they, I guess that is why they are careful in not releasing the names, as it were. Ordinarily, I guess they would have done so. Because if they have those things and they have the evidence of their rigging machinery and they have their names, okay. and you now say you are publishing it, and the court process is brought against such a, you know, okay. uh, embassy. Matthias. How do they defend it? Would they go to America and say that's where they want to defend or in Nigeria? Okay, Matthias, I'll, I'll those are fundamental you. questions. I, I, yeah. I think uh, I, I get your point. Uh, it seems that um, this whole move by the United States may not really hit the target from your position. But I will come back to you. We're being joined by Wale Ogwade, the, the president of Voter Awareness Initiative. Good evening, Mr. Ogwade. Good evening, my brother. How are you? Very fine. Yes, we started this conversation in the morning. So let's continue. Um, interestingly, uh, the, the other colleague of yours, while, I mean, Mr. Matt has, seems to look at um, that this may not really serve as deterrent to 
our political class, that's the politicians. But listening to you in the morning, for the benefit of our viewers who are probably just listening to you, do you think this will have a serious impact? Because according to the US, this is to curb politicians who might want to engage in kind of rigging in the upcoming Edo and Undo state elections. Not only Edo and Undo, state, uh, Undo, and Edo election, but elections generally, okay. not only in Nigeria, Africa, and all over the world. I'll let you know that the Nigerian politician thrives in traveling all over the world because of the fat obstacles they get from the coffers of government. Recently, a speaker of a state house of assembly was alleged to have gone out of Nigeria, traveled with a mistress, and they spent 80 million naira. And, that's what, and of course, one of the destinations is America. The next place is Dubai. And of course, they now go to London. Maybe they go to South Africa or Germany. But when there is a travel ban on such people, definitely everybody will sit tight. That is one. The second one is that the law should be given a teeth that whoever is found wanting in electoral uh, uh, mal malfeasance is brought to book. I am involved in electoral activities as, a, as an election observer and monitor. And I know that I see a lot of activities, illegal activities, thuggery, violence, and sometimes some of them will be caught. And at the end of the day, nothing happened because the big man will go and bail him out. But again, we have ensured that INEC now puts it as part of its regulations that anybody whose agent or himself is involved in electoral malpractices will be banned for 10 years. And that is a statutory uh, uh, duty or power imposed on given to INEC. And of course, if, the, if, the, if anybody goes to court, because before I came in, I was hearing my colleague on the, uh, 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 with you there talking about court papers and so on. I don't know, maybe that's where he's going, but be that as it may, the INEC has the power to disqualify anybody who is found wanting, particularly involving himself or herself, using talks, or using uh, agents to destroy and disturb election and electoral activities. You see, if we don't allow elections to thrive in this country, then definitely we are not there. Ghana was in our shoes some years ago. I'm sure many people who are watching and hearing me know that Ghana, Nigeria, uh, while well, Ghana were in Nigeria in droves, but they got to try it politically. And the irony of it is that Nigerians now go to Ghana some of them work in Ghana and come to Nigeria to sleep and so on. So why can't we make Nigeria an El Dorado? And we can only get it right through our politics. And I'm told that the democracy is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That's the definition, okay, simple uh, definition Ogwande, of the... Mr. Ogwande, let me quickly uh, have your second comment before I go back to Matthias. Now, yes. you, you, I'm happy you brought it back home here. And because what Matthias is saying is that we seem not to have a not bite in our local laws to really deal with these politicians. Yes. Each time we see election being upturned at the poll, and it just ends there. Another person just come in and get him sacked from office. But what about punishing these election riggers? Because it means that you got to power through fraudulent means. Punishing election riggers is a tall order. Because those who will make the laws are these politicians. And some of them, or even if I would say it, most of them got to these offices through this rigging process. So making it a law, it will be very, very tough. But I can assure you that it is the people that can make this thing work. Once you know somebody is an election rigger, we move against them by way of mass action. I'm involved in civil society activity. And I know that we were part of those that drove Babangida out of office, not the guns. There was no a coup. A coup was not against Babangida. It was the people who rose up. The same thing, uh, when we wanted, when uh, some moves were made against, uh, uh, what was it now, go, go, God, uh, Jonathan, to become the president, the same Nigeria group of which I'm a member too, moved against the cabal and eventually became the president. Not the law, not the court. It is the people. So when we people move together, work together, and say no to this uh, to this uh, mediocrity and this uh, okay. nonsense that is going on, 
the political class have no okay. uh, option. I I, I, I'll come continue. back to you for your final comment because our time is really fast spent. Because I was going to ask you that uh, whatever demonstration, whatever protest you carried out, it was also hinged on the law. I remember the principle of uh, uh, <laughs> what's section 45 is jam. Section 40. We have uh, the right. Uh, freedom uh, of abstention. Don't worry, we have that freedom. <laughs> okay, I, I'll come back to that. Let me go back to Mr. Matthias. Mr. Matthias, I'm sure you're itching to make some clarifications on what exactly you are conversing. What I'm saying is simple. I said that the visa ban that has been imposed by the US, for me, will not have the required result if, the, if uh, we take into consideration the same thing that was done in, in July 2019 against those who rigged the general election of 2019. Because if it had the effect, we would not have seen the worst case which occurred in Kogi. But unfortunately, when it came up before the court, although it depends on how the pleadings were couched anyway, the court appears to have endorsed what happened in Kogi. And so what then would you expect in subsequent election? If the court did not capture what the entire world captured, that this is nothing but what a rape. But having said that, the, the point my brother over there said is well taken. You know, the, 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 the point is simple that for the election riggers, we must, as a people, be resolved that never again will we allow such to happen. If the kind of mobilization that was done under Jonathan era or time, you know, was done or is done under the same regime or the time, I guess even if there's going to be rigging, it will be on a very minimal scale because the people demonstrated strength under Jonathan's time. But again, I think that part of it may not be unconnected with the fact that we have a person who has democratic credentials. Because I have asked myself a question. Let's go back to those who are actually the leaders at that material time. Is it between the 1999 to 2007 when the man that was at the helm of the Nigerian, as Nigerian president, was a military man. He has a military background. Or is it under the current uh, president who has a military background? But when you go back to those that have democratic, that are civilian in nature, it's like the nature of the election they give you gives a semblance of civility okay. outside what you have under the military. Okay. So uh, I get the person that is heading, that is the helm of affairs, May equally has a part to play. That's true. You know, okay. in uh, how people react when election co you know comes and how they deal with election regards. Exactly. So, but if you don't have people like that, I mean, it's unfortunate. Okay, uh, and that's a good way to have your final comment. But let me quickly get while you're going. Please, I'm so sorry that we couldn't get you right on time. But maybe in exactly. 30 seconds, I think you made so much points on what you really can that. But going forward. This report has come out. Election riggers will be denied visa. How can we prevent electoral rigging in, on Saturday and probably in October? No, all of, all of us will be on, on our toes. We, the civil society, and the people. And we know that we will blame them. There is no, well, you know, there is the adage that says that the dancing bird on the street has a drama in the bush. So those who are drumming for this talk, who are arming them, once they get them, they arrest the talk, then they will get the leader, their, their principal. And of course, that talk, once the law is being taken against them, and the people say no, if or the other one is that they will now reject them totally in the bar, at the bar, uh, during elections. They will, when, whenever they, they, they come out to contest an election, nobody votes for them. Okay. That's all, they will know that it is the wish of the people that, that will prevail. Not Thank first. you so much. Thank you so much, Wale Ogwan, the President Voter Awareness Initiative for your time. And thank so you so much.
uh, Matthias Emeribe, a legal practitioner, for your insight. We okay. quite appreciate your intervention. Thank you very much. Yeah. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, a peace pact is signed in a state. We'll be right back.